All right, we are back here again for another NFL team preview, 2023 team preview for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We're going to go ahead, we're going to talk about them from a win total perspective. Current total on this Pittsburgh Steeler team, currently right now at eight and a half wins. Mac, I don't think this Steelers team is going to have a winning record this year, so I'm coming right out. This is going to be Mike Conlon's first losing season, and I found a wager that I like. Under nine and a half wins, minus 150 on DraftKings. I'm not sure what camp you're in, but this Steelers team to me, I don't want to say they're fool's gold, but they haven't proven anything yet. But there's a lot of people thinking that the Pittsburgh Steelers are just miraculously going to be this winning above average type of team. I haven't seen it yet. I got a couple of things I want to talk about on why, but right now that's where I'm at. I think the Steelers have their first losing season under Mike Tomlin, and I don't think anybody said that all year long. Well, I don't want to scare you, scare you off your pick here, but Bill Simmons did pick the Steelers to win the Super Bowl at 40 to 1. So if you want to retract right now, I'll give you an opportunity to. I don't know what he's smoking, but um, <laughs> I think in order for you to win the Super Bowl, you need to at least have somewhat of a Super Bowl roster or a Super Bowl quarterback. Um, I see nothing but average players all around this Pittsburgh team uh, outside of maybe, you know, you could call out Watt, like, yeah, very good. But who on their offense is really like an above average player? Like pick out, find me five players that are on the Pro Bowl team from this Pittsburgh team. And I don't think you can do that, but I bet you can do that on every Super Bowl winning team or even Super Bowl losing team uh, over the last probably 10 years. So, Pittsburgh, they're not going to the Super Bowl. They're not winning the Super Bowl. I would be surprised if they even got past the first round. So um, I heard that. I am guessing you probably were listening to the uh, the Bill Simmons and Cousin Sal podcast. Yep. I thought he was a little bit crazy there. I actually like Cousin Sal's pick far more than, than 45 to 1. I think the reason why he said that, Mac, was there was some type of weird like free bet or some crazy wager or something involved with that, and he was like, for 45 to one, there was value in it for like kind of more or less like a free roll. Maybe was that what it was? I, I didn't exactly catch it. Yeah, exactly. It was a fan duel promotion where they get uh, extra uh, cherry on top their Sunday or something. If they pick the Super Bowl winner and it very much felt like what you were saying, where it's like, I might look dumb if I pick the Eagles at six to one or seven to one and they, and they end up being terrible, but this is a very safe kind of flyer where I get to be, uh, you know, on the Steelers, you know, a popular team, and I get to r- ride that narrative. It did seem kind of phony to me. He didn't really give any reasons why they would be a Super Bowl caliber roster. You talk about difference makers. I think you can go to every other team in that division and pick out one or two Miles Garretts and, uh, you know, Jamar Chases and players that are arguably the best at their position. I don't really see, I don't think you can find that outside of TJ Watt on the Steelers. I think the one reason why he probably said that, and it would make sense to me if had he said it on the podcast, is that this team's they have pedigree, right? I mean, this it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Not not only that, they have a coach in Mike Tomlin who has been in the biggest games that understands what it's like to win every single year when his back's up against the wall. When it's like, hey, you, you, you're going to have your first losing season, he's like, no, screw that. We're not. We're going to go out there and win. We're going to go out there and win playoff games or we'll win the Super Bowl. Like he's been there, done that. So um, if you have a team like Pittsburgh who is knocking on the door, maybe they get into the playoffs, anything can happen. But you have to like, you know, the upside being that we've seen the ceiling with Mike Tomlin and, and the Steelers teams in the past that, you know, that that sometimes anything can happen. But let me go ahead and throw a little bit of shade here at the Steelers. Let's look at their schedule real quick. I think that their schedule is – I don't want to say it's terrible, but it's its not set up very well for them. One of the things that I preach about is that you want to play the bad teams at home. It's far easier to circle wins when you have the bad teams coming in your building. It's not good when you play all the bad teams on your schedule on the road. Now the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to play five bad teams this year, the Raiders, the Texans, the Rams, the Colts, the Cardinals – but they have to play four of those teams in their building. That's not good. That's a huge disadvantage here for Pittsburgh. The home schedule for Pittsburgh, it's absolutely brutal. Like they only play one bad team, and that's the Cardinals. Outside of that, they're playing nothing but playoff contender type teams all year long. That's going to wear on them. Uh, I think that when you when you really look at this schedule, circle wins. 
Like, seriously, circle some wins. I'll give him the Arizona game late. It's like week 12, 13. But it's hard to circle a win for a team like this going on the road, even against bad teams. If it were the Chiefs, yeah, you probably circle that. If it was the Bengals, yeah, you probably circle that. But not for a Pittsburgh team that hasn't proven anything, that they're nothing more than just an average to a slightly above average team. That's just the way that – that's the way I think about it. I look at what Pickett did last year. Nice. I look at Najee Harris and Deontay and George Pickens. Nice. Okay, good. You know, average to slightly above average. I don't know how they navigate through this schedule. I'm basing this off schedule is not going to, it's just, it's not going to be easy. And I can't circle really any more than maybe one or two wins. And it's not like I could circle a bunch of losses, Mac, but it's the wins. And when I need to get to eight, nine, 10 wins, and I can only circle one or two games, I'm not going to go ahead and play that team over. I'm just not, especially in the AFC that's stacked, in the division that's stacked. Again, and th- let's be honest, I think the other three teams in that division are better. So how am I betting this team over? There's there's not enough bad teams in the league. I mean, yeah, they're going to play four or five of them, but still, it's just, I don't know, man. It's, it doesn't seem doesn't seem like a wager I want to make, and it feels like I'm, I'm following the sheeps to the slaughterhouse with this one if I pick this team over. So what wager are you recommending? Because it's minus 150 to the over. I see plus 125 to the under. Uh, Would you rather play that eight and a half under plus 125 or you can get under nine at minus 110? I would actually play the under nine and a half at minus 150 on DraftKings. Oh, it's it's an alternative pick? Yeah, Yeah. it's an alternative bet. Like there's no way this team's winning 10 games. That's not going to happen. They would, in, in order for them to win 10 games, they would have to beat all the bad teams on the road. More than likely, that's not going to happen. So let's just say they beat all those bad teams on the road and they beat Arizona. All right, there's five wins. Now you have nothing but playoff teams left. Games that you are more than likely probably going to be uh, 70% an underdog. And let's just say like the remaining, I don't know what it would be. What would it be? Like 11 or 10 games. Like you're going to be an underdog in probably 60, 70% of them. And now you need another five wins out of those games. It's just... It, the math just doesn't add up to me f- for this team to win 10. Could they get to nine? I Sure, I think they might be able to get to nine. But they're going to have to beat some of those bad teams on the road, and they're going to have to squeeze out some of those tougher games, and I honestly just don't see it. I feel comfortable laying the juice at nine and a half because I think 10 is like very, very valuable um, in this particular case. So, yeah, it's under nine and a half for me, alternate bet on DraftKings. Yeah, it's very interesting. Looking at their schedule, there's three games, count them, three games where they're more than a field goal favorite. They're at the Texans, they're hosting the uh, Titans, and as you mentioned, they uh, host the Cardinals. Other than that, it's a lot of coin flip games, a lot, a lot of coin flip games. There's one, two, there's ten games where they're either a two and a half point favorite or a two and a half point dog, and it very rarely, as you know, settles between one and two in an NFL game, so those are pretty much ten coin flip games. Um I feel like the Steelers are better as an underdog, better as like going to surprisingly win as a six point dog, but that's not really what they're asked to do here. They're asked to maintain excellence uh, versus teams that are just as good as good as good as them. I don't know. So I feel like the Steelers the same way I feel about the Lions in this regard. Lions went eight and two down the stretch and now they're expected to be the best Lions team literally by the Vegas odds uh, since the 90s, as long as these odds go back. The Steelers, they started off very bad, exposed perhaps, weren't that good defensively. I remember Fez and RJ were arguing whether they were the 29th worst team in the league or the 23rd worst team in the league. And I guess RJ ultimately won that because the last nine games of the season, they won seven of those games. And Kenny Pickett went from maybe he could do it to now he's the franchise guy, at least at this point in time in history. We're going to give him that title. I want to question those nine games, though, where they went seven and two. Uh, cause they obviously saved their winning record. Mike Tomlin gets another, was that 15, 16, 17 years in a row without a losing record. He gets all the credit in the world for that, but I'm not sure they beat anybody. They beat Jeff Saturday and the Colts. They beat the Falcons right before they benched Mariota. They beat them 1916. I think that was the last game Mariota played. Uh, not very impressive, even on the road. They lost to the Ravens. Then they beat the Panthers uh, with Sam Darnold and that whole new, uh, philosophy that was going on there they had the interim head coach that thought he could make a run for it so that's a decent win at Carolina it's not nothing they beat the Raiders I think that was Derek Carr's last game sensing a little bit of a theme here where they're playing quarterbacks on their last leg 
They beat the Ravens without Lamar Jackson in a game uh, where only 29 points were scored, 16-13. And then with all the marbles on the table, with the chance to either go first losing team ever or best or longest run of not lo- having a losing season ever, they beat the Browns in Week 18. I'm not saying we throw all those games out the window, but if you want to say what's more representative what the, who the Steelers are, the first half of the season where they were 2-6 and six versus good teams, or the last nine games of the season where they were 7-2 and two and really didn't beat anybody of any consequence, I'd say going forward, I think you probably take it all into account. If anything, the first half of the season would be a little bit more representative in my eyes. So I've heard a lot of the... Uh, Steelers fan base get on their offensive line, especially their internal offensive line. It was very hard for them to generate any kind of push up the middle. The fact that they traded two of their starters from last year in the last couple weeks tells me either A, they're desperate to fix an an offensive line that just wasn't working, uh, or B, they really like some of their other guys and they feel like they can trade away some of their depth because they feel like these new guys that they brought in uh, are going to make the difference. I, it's a question mark for me, and, and uh, I ended up going with the Bengals under, like I said, for the AFC North preview, but I probably, if I had my judges, would have made the argument for Steelers under nine, or especially your bet, where you're not having to pay, you're only having to pay 40 cents over minus 110, and you're getting a full half win over market. I like the under nine and a half a lot. That's, I think that's a very, very shrewd way to go about it. Um, I think the Steelers are an average team in the toughest, toughest division in football. That you know, that's as basically as I can say it. Average team in the toughest division in football. I expect them to win eight games, and Mike Tomlin's finally going to have a first losing season. I wouldn't be shocked at all. So, Mike, let me ask you: If you're saying average team, what would the average team total be set at? Would it still be eight? Yeah, very good question. Well, it's eight and a half if it was an average team in an average division. However, if you look at the Steelers' opponents and their average win total, their average opponent actually has a win total of about eight point six five. So to simplify the math, you can just say, well, their average opponent is about 0.2 better than an average team. So their average result is going to be 0.2 worse. So eight and a half, if they're completely average, if like God came down and said, this is the 16th best team in the league on a normal distribution, they'd be right there, dead center, completely average. We'd expect this team to have an 8.3 win total based on their strength of schedule. It's a lot. It's point. It's three quarters higher than that. It's at nine, I think is consensus. So I do think they're a little bit overrated. Well, I do think on the surface, like when you take this team as a, let's just say, 22-man roster, I would say that they're slightly above average. That's about as far as I'll go. But one of my big issues with this team is the fact that they might be one of the the worst teams when it comes to skill position, when it comes to the depth. They have no backup running backs that are really anything out there that that are going to be able to really give you a big push. Uh, their wide receiver core, if they lose guys off their wide receiver core, like if Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, or Allen Robinson go down, um, I don't know what the hell they're going to do. Um, it's going to be a lot of Pat Fryermuth. So I think that the depth could be an issue. And if they do catch a couple dings like Najee goes down or Deontay goes down, one of those guys go down or two, I think they go from being maybe a slightly above average team to a slightly below average team. And there's no team in the NFL that's going to manage to be able to get through you know, the entire season without their skill guys getting banged up. And I think that that's one of the the big issues for this Pittsburgh team is they just don't have a whole lot of quality um, on their depth chart, at least at their skill positions. I mean, Kenny Pickett, if he goes down, I mean, Trubisky's there, Rudolph's there. I mean, guys that have played, you know, in the starting role before, like they might actually be okay at quarterback, but it's the other, especially the wide receiver core. Like the wide receiver core has to stay healthy. Deontay Johnson has never shown that he can do that. Allen Robinson has had issues, and George Pickens is is more or less, uh, I guess you could say, a little bit of an unknown, you know, when it comes to injury injury type of risk. But for me, it's um, I mean, it's it's nothing more than just a slightly above average team, and the fact that they play all their bad teams on the road. I mean, I'm telling you now that that is a huge negative. Not only that, but Mac, I think you would probably agree. And when you're going up against a team, let's just say like Indy or Houston or whatever, those teams are searching for wins earlier on in the year. And you have to play those teams earlier on in the year. The one layup this team has is against Arizona, who might be packed in, tanked in by the time they play them. But the other four teams that they have to play on the road, they might be playing those teams in desperate situations where they're actually out there looking for a win. And I think that that just spells bad news for this Pittsburgh team. Um, all around. So I'm, I'm playing them under the nine and a half minus 150 on DraftKings. I, I think that's a very good wager. 
I don't know how this team wins 10. And I, I it's it's even in question that this team could win eight. So um, I'm going to call for their first losing season. That's where I'm at, Mac. That's my final my final answer. The best part about it is they don't have to have a losing season. They go nine and eight. You're cashing that ticket. I think you're shopping and finding that shrewd under nine and a half. I think it's a low variance team. Wouldn't shock me if they won nine. Definitely wouldn't shock me if they won eight. Be a little surprising. They won 10, so that's why I like the under 9.5. You're not having to pay too much for it. So I'm going to go ahead and endorse that bet. Um, I will say this. I'm not going to bet it, but as a 49ers fan with Nick Bosa, I would say at this point likely to miss week one, at least have very limited practice time. I don't mind the Steelers plus 2.5, and and I've never bet against uh, my cousin's team. I don't think think, uh, in my life, but I'm definitely not running to the – run into the window to bet on them. That's a very scary position. Mike Tomlin, a very excellent record at home uh, as a dog. So that's why I think week one could be a little bit of a of a shocker. Uh, but if they do go as the Vegas market predicts and lose week one, it's going to be very hard to get to 10 wins, if not impossible. That's like the fishy line of the week, I think. Everybody is it's like, fishy. Oh, it is fishy. San Fran minus two and a half. It's like, oh, yeah, just bet them. Not so fast. Uh, but so there you guys go. That that's that's the Pittsburgh Steelers in a nutshell, kind of what we're thinking with them. Um, since we're giving out crazy Super Bowl predictions here, Mac, uh, you know, free bets on Fanduel. I will tell you this: the Steelers are not winning the Super Bowl with, with whatever free bet you're getting there on Fanduel. But I will throw out my kind of sleeper pick here, and I think that this might be a wager. Maybe you can find there, Mac. And I haven't seen this. What division will win the Super Bowl? I'll tell you right now. The AFC North is a really good division for you to go ahead and put your money down on. I really think the Bengals have a really good chance. I really think Baltimore has a really good chance. I have both of those teams within my top three teams. I have Cincinnati two, Baltimore three. A lot of people ask me why I have Baltimore three. I can get into a lot of uh, a lot of conversation with that. But I think if you can find a wager, maybe play Baltimore or maybe just find the AFC North to go ahead and win win the Super Bowl. You might even be able to get that at like five, six to one somewhere in that area. I don't know what the, what that. I don't know what the market would say on that. Mac, do you have any idea with that? Yeah, like I said, they have the highest win totals, or maybe I didn't say it, but they're the best division just by the Vegas odds. If you average the win total of each of their four teams, they're number one. But they're fourth when it comes to this bet you're talking about, which division's going to win the Super Bowl? The NFC East, obviously, with the Eagles and the Cowboys, but nothing really beyond that. The AFC West are always going to be up there with the Chiefs and the Chargers. Uh, AFC East is plus 380. They have better odds than the North. I don't see that one at all, where it's Bills, and then it's a big drop-off, I think, to the Jets and the Dolphins. So AFC North, 5-1. to one. I think they have three Super Bowl contenders, the Steelers not being one of them, unfortunately, for Bill Simmons. Uh, but yeah, I don't, li- I don't mind that wager. I think, they, I think they have a better shot than the NFC East at 4-1, to one, so I don't mind that wager. I think when you when you look at it, Mac, you have three teams that potentially could make the playoffs, and let's just say one of those three teams make it in. I mean, there's a good chance that it could be Baltimore versus Cleveland or Cleveland versus Cincinnati in, in the championship game. Like, I could be walking into the Super Bowl with a 5-1 a to one ticket, and I'm not going to be a 5-1 to one dog in the Super Bowl no matter what. So I think that you got three teams that could legitimately make it there. I might – get lucky and, and, you know, have one of them might be, you know, knocking each other out, but advancing one. So anyway, so there's, there's a goofy wager for you. I figured to give you guys something crazy before we go ahead and jump off the podcast, but that's our breakdown there of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, again, if you guys have not followed along and, and seen all the previews that we've done, uh, make sure you guys go to pregame.com, check out our YouTube page. And if you guys are, are tired of listening to my voice and you haven't listened to all the other ones, you can go to the pregame.com news section and you can read up on all these teams. Mackenzie Rivers has all that information in there. Follow us on Twitter at Sleepy Jan underscore pregame at Mac and Rivers. Uh, you guys can get more information from pregame.com at pregame now. If you guys are looking for a free bet, go ahead and enter code pregame25 there at pregame.com. With that said, I'd like to wish you guys all the best of luck. Enjoy the games.